Hey guys, welcome to another lesson. So as promised, today we'll be looking at some calculations using Kirchhoff's rule. Right, so our last lesson showed us Kirchhoff's rule entails the junction rule as well as the loop rule. Right, so today we'll be looking at some calculations, three calculations on using Kirchhoff's rules in order to get some unknown quantities. All right, so let's go. So question one, right? So it, we see the circuit there, right? Now, it asks us to find what's the value of I2 and I3, right? So it gives us I1, which is one ampere, right? So in this case, we have our junction rule, which states that I1 at plus I2 equals I3. Right? So if we notice I3 is going to the point A, when it reaches point A, it's going to actually split. Right? So because of that splitting, then I2 and I1 would be equal to I3. Right? So we have our junction there. So let's look at the loop now. Right? So the first loop would be on the left-hand side. So we're starting the loop in a clockwise motion. Right? So on the left side, on the clockwise motion, so that means the epsilon there for the potential difference or the EMF of the battery will be a positive because it's leaving the battery at a positive direction, right? And then it's going, our loop is going down through the 3 ohm, while current also I2 is going down, right? So that's a negative I2 times the resistance, which is 3, right? Then it goes up through R and our current I3 is also going up through R. So that means it's negative I3R equals zero. Right? Then loop two, right? So with loop two, we're going in a clockwise motion as well. So our potential difference, our EMF in our battery there is 24. So it's a positive 24, right? It goes down through the six ohm resistor, right? As well as current is I1 is also going down as well. So that's both going down, so that's negative, right? So we get a negative 6 times the current I1, which is 3. So 3 times 6. And then it going up through the 3 ohm resistor, but I2 is going down. So because total different direction, then we add I2 times 3, and we get equal 0. So now we have both loops. Right, so for loop one, epsilon, so we simplify, right? So it's epsilon minus three I2 minus R I3 equals zero. And for loop two, we have plus 24 minus 18 plus three I2 equals zero. So now we can simplify the plus 24 minus 18, we get plus six plus three I2 equals zero. We take over the six, so we get 3i2 equal negative 6, we divide by 3 and we get i2 to be negative 2 amp, right? Now let's focus on the negative, right? So the negative in the question there only simplifies to mean that the direction originally given for i2 should be in the opposite direction. So instead of i2 going down, i2 should actually be going up, right? So in our final answer, you would ignore the 2, the negative, sorry, and just write 2. Right? So our current for I2 is 2 amp. Then we look at the junction. Right? So remember the junction was I1 plus I2 equals 3. I3, right? But because the direction of I2 changes now, the junction equation we can rewrite to be I1 equals I2 plus I3. Right? So in that case, we can find I3 because we have I1, which is 3. We have I2, which is 2. Remember, we ignore the negative because we just rewrote the, the equation, right? So it's just 2 plus I3. So we take over the 2, so it's 3 minus 2, and we get 1. So I3 would be 1 amp, right? So that's question 1. Let's look at question 2. It will only get harder, right? So each level, we're going to make, increase the thinking capacity. All right, so question two. So in this case, we find the EMF of the battery on the left side, All right? So I 
noting our direction that we want our current to go. Right? So the question originally gave I to be 2 amps going to the left. Right? So it's up to us now to determine what the direction of the two other currents would be at the junction there. Right? So I stated that I1 is going down and I2 is going to the right. Right? So if I1 is going down, I2 going to the right, then that means I1 is the one that split to give I and I2. Alright? So in that case, I1 is equal to I plus I2. Then let's look at the loop. Right? So notice our loop is going in a clockwise motion. Right? I like using clockwise motion, but you can use anticlockwise if you like. Alright? So for loop 1, which is the left side, it's, let's start from the the battery on the right. So it's a positive 8 because it's coming from the positive side of the battery. Alright? Then it goes to the next battery, which it leaves it also at the positive side. So it's a positive epsilon. It goes through the current, the one ohm resistor, right, going up, and current I is also will be going up. So both directions are the same. So it's a negative one for the resistance times I, right, and then minus three ohm resistor at the top because it's going to the right as well as current will also be going to the right. The same I current will be going there. So it's minus three I minus we going down now the five ohm resistor all right so we get five times negative i1 because on that branch it's i1 that is the current that's going there and it's same thing for the negative one i1 as well and all that equal zero all right so we can simplify so we get plus eight plus epsilon the two times i i is two so one times two sorry is negative two and the three times two is negative six minus six I1. Alright, so we get minus 6I1 because we already have minus 5I1 minus 1I1. So we get minus 6I1 and that's equal to 0. Alright, so we can simplify further because we have plus 8, minus 2, and minus 6, all constants. Alright, so minus 2, minus 6 is minus 8 and we add that to plus 8, we get 0. So we only have epsilon minus 6I1 equal 0. And that's only for loop one. All right, so let's look to loop two now. So loop two also, in this case, we're going in the anti-clockwise motion, right? So just to show you that whatever direction your loop is, you'll still get your answer. All right, so loop two going in anti-clockwise motion. So we're starting with the, the battery again. So it's a plus eight because it's leaving from the positive side of the battery. Right? It's going up through the 12 ohm resistor, while I2 is also going up. Right? So therefore, it's a negative 12 I2. And then it comes down through the 5, which is a negative 5 I1. And a negative 1 I1 equals 0. Right? So we have 8 minus 12 I2. We, might, we add minus 5 and minus 1 I1. And we get minus 6 I1. And that's equals 0. So now, if we look back at our junction, we say that I1 equals I plus I2, right? So from equation, from loop 2, we can substitute I for I plus I2. So in equation loop 2, where I1 is, we're going to substitute it for I plus I2. So we have plus 8 minus 12 I2 minus 6 I minus 6i2 equals 0, right? So we can group the i2s together to so get negative 18i2, right? And i, remember i from the question, it says it's 2. So it's 6 times 2, we get 12, right? So we have plus 8 minus 18i2 minus 12 equals 0. And we group our constants, so it's plus 8 minus 12, we get minus 4, Right? And that's equal to 0. We take over the minus 4. So we get negative 18i2 equals positive 4. Divide both sides by 18. Negative 18, sorry. And we get zero, negative 0 0.22 amps. And remember again, because the negative is there, negative only states that 
the initial direction that we had for I2 should be in the opposite direction. So because of that, we have to rewrite our junction equation to mimic that the current is actually going in the opposite direction, which shows us that I now would be equal to I1 plus I2. All right, so the purpose why we're doing this now, the, even though we want to find the EMF of the battery, is that if we look back on the loop one, which only has the, the epsilon that we want to find, it has I1 in it, but we just found I2. So therefore we need to find what I1 is so we can substitute it there. So we rewrite the junction equation to find I1. So I1 now is equal to I minus I2. I is 2, and we just found out I2 is 0 0.22, All right? So we get 1.78 amps for I1. So now we can substitute that 1.78 into loop 1. So we get plus epsilon minus 6. I1 value is 1.78, right? Equals 0, and we get negative 10.68 and we take it over to the left side, to the right side, sorry, and we get a positive 10.68 volts. All right, so epsilon of the battery is 10.68, which is your EMF. All right, let's look at the last question, which is this circuit here that has branch, three different branches, right? And we need to find the current in all three branches. So let's go. So in this case, no current was given, right? So no direction of current was given. So we, I determined to use these directions. You can actually use different directions once you notice that one current enters the junction, which is at the top in the center, and it will leave in two different directions, right? So what I did was to make I won't go up, I3 goes to the left and I2 to the left as well, right? So in this case, I3 would be the sum of I1 plus I2, right? So when I1 and I2 goes to the junction, they both combine to give us I3, right? So loop 1, which is our loop on the left, we're going anticlockwise this time, right? And we start off with our battery to make it easy. So it's leaving the positive side of the battery again. So it's a plus four, right? And then it goes up, same direction as I1. So both the one and the five ohm resistors would be negative voltage drop. So it's a negative one times I1 minus five times I1. And then it's going down through the eight, same direction as I3, that is, would be going down through eight as well. So it's negative eight I3 equals zero. So we simplify because we have both I1s there. So negative 1 and negative 5 I1s. So you get negative 6 I1, right? So we get plus 4 minus 6 I1 minus 8 I3 equals 0, right? But we can substitute from our junction I3 value to get I1 and I2 because I3 is equal to I1 plus. So we substitute I3 for I3 with I1 plus I2 from our junction. So we get my plus 4 minus 6 I1 minus 8 I1 minus 8 I2 equals 0. Right? So we simplify the I1 values. So we get we take over the 4 as well, so it becomes negative. Right? So we have minus 14 I1 minus 8 I2 equals negative 4. Right? And then we move to loop 2. Right, so loop two is going anti-clockwise. No, clockwise, sorry, this time. Right, and we're starting with our battery. So in this case, it leaves our battery, which is your four battery, four volt battery, leaves it at the positive side. So it's positive four, right? It's going up with I1 through one and five ohm resistors. So it's a negative one I1 minus 5 I1 and then it's going opposite direction to your 3 ohm which is 3 I2 right and then it's going also down which is the opposite direction through the 
I2 value, which is going up through the 1 on the right hand side. So it's 1I2 plus 1I2. Alright, and then it's going through that battery, which it, go, it exits the battery from the negative side this time. So it's a negative 12 and that's equal to 0. Alright, so we simplify the, the 1s, the I1s and the I2s. And so we get the 4, the plus 4 and the negative 12, we get negative 8. The negative 1 I1 and the 5 I, negative 5 I1, we get 6 I1. And the 3 I2 and the 1 I2, we get 4 I2, right? So now we have both our loop equations, right? So if we notice loop 1 is 14 I1 minus negative 14 I1 minus 8 I2 minus 4. And we now have loop 2 being negative I6, negative 6 I1 plus 4 I2 minus 8 equals 0, right? So we can eliminate I2 to make it easy by multiplying loop 2 by 2 to make I2 now becomes 8, just like loop 1. So 2 times 6 is 12, 2 times 4, 8, 2 times 8, 16. So we get loop 2 to be negative 12 I1 plus 8 I2 equals 16. Now we have both equations because both signs are different. We can add. So we add negative 14 I1 plus negative 12 I1. We get negative 26 I1. The I2s get cancelled. Equal negative 4 plus 16. We get positive 12. Divide both sides by negative 26. Then we get negative 0 0.46 amps. And remember the negative just means that I1, the direction that we had, is not, it's actually wrong. It should be in the next direction, right? So that's all it means, right? Now, I'm going to show you, instead of rewriting the junction rule, we can actually write the value of I1, but in this case, we take the negative with it. So, please remember, right? If you do not rewrite the junction, equation then once you're using the value that you got as a negative you have to use a negative in your answer right so let's look so remember loop one was plus four minus six i1 minus eight i3 equals zero we just found i1 right so we can find i3 from this so we have plus four minus six times and notice the negative 0 0.46 right minus eight i3 equals zero right so we simplify there and we get negative 8i3, we take over the 6.76, we get a negative, right? So both negative sides, we can cancel the negatives and we divide by 8, we get 0 0.85 amps for i3, right? And then to find i2, we use loop 2, which states that negative 6i1 plus 4i2 equals 8. Right? So it's negative 6 times negative 0 0.46, which is I1 value, plus 4I2 equals 8. Right? We simplify that and we take it over. So we have plus 4I2 equals 5.24. Divide both sides by 4. We get I2 to be 1.31 amps. Right? So I, did, I showed you both ways. Right? So if you're rewriting the junction for this question, it, you would have to rewrite your loop equation, right? So in order for not, that not to happen, you can just use the value negative in the loop equations that you already have. But for the previous question, since it was only one current that we were finding, we could actually rewrite the junction to get the one that we wanted. All right, guys. So thank you very much for joining today. Hope you guys learned and understand something today. And see you next time.